Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to duplicate and update a database in Notion with the help of make.com, the best tool for automating uh, workflows between apps or inside of apps. Uh, the first question you might have is, why is that actually possible? Why would you need to uh, duplicate a database in Notion? Well, for that, there exist several um, work cases. For example, you might have a database that con contains uh, private information you don't want to share with clients. So in that case, you want to duplicate a database uh, inside a database that only contains information that can be shared with your clients. Another use case I've recently encountered was um, a client who wanted to share information uh, of some influencers, so information about their accounts, their pricing, etc and he wants to share this information with his clients. But if you have one influencer and several clients and now one client is changing the status, he would change the status for all the other clients as well. And of course, we don't want that. To avoid this, to avoid this kind of interference, uh, it's better to actually create um, a new entry of this influencer and the client, uh, yeah, with one client assigned each. And so for one client, you create a new entry and for the next client, you create another entry and so on. This way, there is no confusion with the status because every client uh, only sees the entries assigned to him or her. And there's no second client assigned to the same entry. In summary, if we create a new entry and we assign a client to that entry, we want to duplicate it in the second database influencer action. So from influencer to influencer action. And the question is how to do that with make.com. So first we start a new scenario in make.com and we call it notion uh, database uh, duplication. And for doing that, we click on the plus, and now we can select the app we want to work with. In this case, it's Notion, of course, and it's right here. So we click on it, and now uh, we see a list of modules we can choose. For starting the scenario, we use the Watch Database Items models. So I click here and select it. What will it do? It will watch the first database influencer and see if there's any change then, and that will trigger the scenario. And now we can say uh, watch by updated time or by created time. And uh, we will say by updated time because we don't want to, uh, want to trigger it when we create a new entry, only when there is an update happening. And now we need to find a database ID. I will show you quickly how to find it. One way is to open a, a database as a page. And now in the URL, you see um, the string between slash and the question mark. That's your database ID. There is a second way to do it in make.com. So let's go back. And here we can simply search for the database. So we say influencer, that's the name of the database. And now we should get two results. So the first database and the second database. Oh, <laughs> are we connect? Ah, we have the wrong connection. So let me quickly connect it with my, with the latest connection. That should be the correct connection. We add this one and now uh, if you search for the database, we should get two databases when we search for influencer. And yeah, we have it here. Influencer action is the second database and influencer first. We need this one for the watch module. And the limit, uh, it's now limited to two. Uh, we need more because if there are many changes in the database, um, at the same day, and let's say we, we let it run through once a day, then uh, probably two is not uh, enough. So I would say 10 is a good limit. Because if somebody is, for example, editing 10 entries on a given day, but we set the limit to two, then uh, the scenario will only execute the first two updates, but not the other ones. 
So for this scenario, we will say 10. I think that should work out fine. So let's click on OK. And when should it start? Um, let's say from now on. In this case, that's the best option. OK. Let's add the next module. And uh, we need actually um, a router. Why do we need a router? Well, because we don't only want to create new entries. We want also to update entries um, into the second database. So we want to create a new Notion, Notion module and we want to create a database item in the second database if we add a new person here. So how to do that? Well, we have connection to Notion and now we need to enter a database ID again. So we use search because I think that's faster. Influencer, search for the database and we get our two influencer databases. This time we select influence action. That's the second database. And now the fields or properties of this database appear and we can map it with the information we got from the first database. So the name, Instagram, yeah, proud note we are not going to map because we don't want to duplicate it into the second database, the price we want to map and the person. So we always, always want to uh, add the last person in this field. Um, yeah, let's start this. So we have the name and we search under property values for the name. And we select plain text and add it here. Person, we select map. And now we need to search for the last person ID and we select a string. Projects, we don't need to map. Corresponding ID, we don't need to map. Instagram, yeah, we map that, of course. Um, that's a text field because um, I got actually problems when um, when doing this with an URL field. So you can actually have the email or the website URL field. But uh, what I noticed it when the website, for example, when the name is formatted wrong, for example, we, without an HTTP or this maybe um, yeah, it's not the correct website, um, then th th there would be a, an error in make. And of course, uh, that will stop the automation and we don't want to have that. So it's much easier to do that with a text field because you can actually enter everything in a text field. So there's no need to select um, the URL or the email field, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, let's Continue, we have the price and we will select price. Status, uh, we can say um, not active. That's it. And what we now can do is also add a filter. Uh, we should do it because otherwise every update we create a new entry, that's too much. So, and we have created that create checkbox and only if the checkbox is checked, then we want to create a new entry here. So we say set up a filter and create. And condition is uh, under properties values again. If create is equal to true, then it should go through. And that's it. So um, now we can say um, let's add a new user so that should trigger a change in the watch database module and let's see if the automation goes through yeah it went through you see the filter there's no error message so that worked and yeah do we have the data here the bundle got through as well and how does it look here we have the second database and we have made a duplication of our first entry so what's happening when we, for example, uh, select a new user and let's do that again. Let's do a second entry. And yeah, that's working as well. And now we have the second user um, in our influence action database. 
So now in the next step, in the final step, we also want to actually um, synchronize updates we do in the first database with the second database. So if you, for example, change the price, that should be reflected in the second database. There's one uh, thing that makes it a bit more complicated. So it would be pretty easy if uh, we have one entry here and only one entry here uh, with the same influencer. But in this case, Albert is appearing in two entries and we need to update two entries. So how can we actually know which uh, which entry to update or how can make know that? Well, we use the ID of this entry and we will copy it in every new entry we create in the second da database. This way we can actually filter the right entries and make sure that only those get updated. Uh, for doing that, for this, for doing this, we have to adjust the first mapping. So we click here and we see the field or property corresponding ID and we select ID and select a string and click OK. Uh, ID, this is here, is property and we use the formula and ID brackets open and closed and this will result in the ID of this entry. And now if we create a new user, let's say it's Verena, so Verena and Instagram, Verena, Verena, Verena 21. Uh, we don't need a private note, price is 4,000 and I will add myself here and um, that is checked as well. So if we run automation now, it's going through and yeah, we have Verena as a user here and with the corresponding ID. So very well. And now if we update Verena's entry, for example, say, no, the price is just 5,000. We want that this will be updated here as well. Or well, let's, uh, to make it clear, let's uh, add a second user. And this way, if we run it, good. We've got two entries with Verena. This update should be re uh, reflected in both entries. So how can we do that? Well, we have here our router and uh, for the second flow we use of course notion and search objects now we what do what are we searching we can search for databases pages or database items in this case database items and in which database um, again in the second database influence action influence action and filter which uh, yeah, which entries do we want to see? Um, corresponding ID, and this should equal. And now we use information from the first bundle from the watch database uh, item, and the, the corresponding ID should be the same as the ID of the watch database item. Okay, that's it. Now close that and we click on OK. Now after that, we add an update notion, uh, update a database item module. Um, again, we search for what influencer database, influencer action database because we want to, to update that. And now we map it again. So first we have to say which database item ID from our search module, from the search module, or for, uh, search module number eight, we used page ID. And now we say, okay, name, we do it as before, we from now we use the watch database ID, so the first module we have, we use name, plain text. Uh, we want to update Instagram, so we uh, search for the Instagram property. Again, plain text. Price, uh, we, we're doing the same as before. 
and status is, uh, yeah, we are not going to update. So, and that's it. We should also add a filter again, and we call it update, and condition is if update is true, then this will go through. Okay, so uh, now we have in the Influence Action Database two Verena entries from our Verena Influencer, and uh, but we now change the price to 5,000 in our original database, and we want to reflect that price change in all the entries here. So is that working with the automation we just built? Let's see. It's working, it's going through two times. So two entries were actually edited. And you see, both entries got updated. Um, one last thing, um, we want actually, um, if we have created a database, we want to remove the check mark. The same is when after updating a database, we want to remove that. How can we do that? Well, we add something to the flow. We, uh, we select Notion, we say update, and we enter database ID again. So influencer, influencer, ah, sorry, that was wrong. Not influencer action, but influencer, the original database is going to be updated. Um, database I team ID that is uh, from uh, which one is that watch data database item so from the first we use database item ID this one and yeah um, we want to uh, remove the check mark so from create we say no um so that should remove the check mark and we can actually clone that and just so we don't care for create in this case we want just to remove the check mark from update so and that's it and now um if we do another change here and um, yeah, we run the automation again. So it's running again uh, in the update flow. And we see here, this is updated. And yeah, the update is removed. The check mark is removed here. And the prices were reflected here very well. Um, add a user here, let's say Cowork Vienna. And yeah, let's run the automation. So now we have the great check mark um, is here. It's running through, and yeah, the check mark from create from the create property is removed. And that is how you create an update databases in Notion. The use case in this video might have been a bit specific, so maybe a bit more complicated than the use cases you need for yourself in Notion with make.com, but still I think you could learn a lot by following my steps, my workflow, um, my steps through the workflow in this video. If you have any additional questions, so don't hesitate to ask me in the comments of this video, I will try to answer them as fast as possible. So that's everything from my side. I wish you a productive and beautiful day and see you soon around on YouTube.